Good afternoon, Trey. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine. So, although I, I'm a bachelor right at the moment, so that that's no fun. <laughs> you know, well, I have uh, lots of four-legged furry children still running around, but you know, and you're babysitting a couple more. Yeah. So it, everybody went on vacation and left me with the dogs. Yeah. Well, that's because I have the number one job. That's true. If Shawnee goes into labor, yeah. then I get to watch Calvin. So someone important has to do that. That's what pops for. Oh, yeah. So anyway, so you feeling better? Yeah, I'm feeling better. Voice is a lot better, uh, a lot less mucus. You know, I was very backed up. It was uh, not fun. So no. hopefully, hopefully that's it for the year. Being sick never is fun. So, mm -mm. well, we've got some fun to discuss today. So one of my favorite things to do, and we're going to go down into details on that. So, oh yeah, I'm excited. So in construction, one of the coolest things you can do is build something. And that's always a really cool thing to accomplish, but even better than just building something is to take something that's there and blow it up. Oh yeah. And start over. And so you get the big transformation from big ugly to big beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's uh that's what we're gonna talk about today because it's a timing thing that is really important for a lot of people that have existing swimming pools so they can still look at the function of using it for one year and then have it ready for the following year. Yeah. So a lot of people will ask, when's the best time to do this? And I always suggest, well, you want to use your pool, especially in the hottest time of the year here in Texas. And this would be different in other parts of the country, but here in Texas, you want August and September, the two hottest months of the year. And if you want to swim the whole summer, ideally what May 1st is when people start swimming. Yeah, that's a, a good good figure. Sometimes it's a little earlier than that. Sometimes it's a little later than yeah. that. But, you know, so we want to swim, you know, usually up till October. So if you look at, okay, we're going to blow a project up and this pool is still functional. Now, if you got a pool that's structurally damaged and it's not functioning and all it's got is some scummy water in the bottom, we'll start that project as quick as you can. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a project where you've got a functional swimming pool and we're going to tear it up and it's not going to be functional for months, what you want to do is look at starting the design work in July or June. So we're already too late. But if you're, if you rush things and maybe you, you might get the perfect situation still. So that's why we wanted to broadcast this episode now and not wait till later. And also when you're getting that timeline, uh, some jobs obviously take longer than others, uh, depending on, you know, certain variables. Um, so if, are you talking just in general, like a pool or is this like a pool and cabana combo? Cause I know that can be, take a little bit more time. So here, and again, this is relative to here in this market yeah. and, and every place is different, but if you got your design work done, say by August 1st and you're ready to contract on it. I would say you, you're you going to need at least three months to safely engineer and get working construction drawings done and permits done. Yeah. Okay, so you're all of August, all of September, all of October. So now we're going to blow it up November 1st. Okay. Okay, so, you know, you got to use it for the whole, uh, you know, summer, the warm part of the fall. Now we're blowing it up on November 1st. If you were able to figure things out earlier, and blow it up, you know, maybe October 1st, then you've got a little bit more time. Uh, but it, it, this is a scenario we're going to roll with. So then okay. I've got from November 1st, I've got all November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So I've got seven months of construction that I can do. So if I have a pool, I can easily build a pool in seven months. Okay. Yeah. Now, if it's an outdoor living project in a pool, well, most of those I can do in seven months at also. Now, if you get into something that's crazy, mm -hmm. okay, which we, we do a lot of crazy, which is a lot of fun, uh, but some of those projects take a year. So again, that schedule is not something you're going to worry about. You just need to start. At some point, you're not going to swim, you know, a certain part of the year if your construction process is going to take a whole year. So, but ideally, 
you, you get this done and then it rolls around to May 1st and you've got the whole season to, to use your pool. So from a timing standpoint, ideally, you know, you got to August 1st. So when this episode drops, I think it drops August 1st. <laughs> now, let, let's so. talk about why, why would you blow it up and start over? Yeah. So what are the reasons that you've seen some of our clients do? Um, for instance, uh, a good reason, there's multiple reasons, um, but there's, you know, the pool's the wrong size. So, you know, you want a pool area where they can, the kids can dive in it. Maybe it's just a rec pool or something like that. Um, that causes an issue. Sure. So you've got people that come in, they have a small 15 by 30 pool, and they're like, we, we want to have hangout space. Mm-hmm. We want a tanning ledge, and there, weren't, there wasn't one in this pool at all, and we want to have... Uh, play water basketball or, or, or water volleyball, which takes a lot of shower area. Plus, oh, we want to dive too. And so we need a lot of space to add to this situation. So uh, just blow it up and start over would make more sense than trying to. Now, someone uh, might say, hey, you could just, you know, cut that pool and then create a, a, a lower shelf, you know, so you could dive into. Is that wrong? So. This is where you need to talk to the structural engineers okay. that you are going to work with and you're comfortable with. Uh, I'm not an engineer, yeah. so I have certain ways that I do things. And also the engineer that I work with has certain ways of doing things. So that's the way that we look at it. But again, it may be different for you in your area that you may be able to salvage part of the structure and add on to it. But most of the time, the, the dimensions just aren't there. You know, if you want to add a, a ledge and you want shallow area and you want diving area, you're going to have to add on a significant amount. So mm-hmm. that that's the wrong size uh, could certainly be. And along with that, the function of that size. So I had a, a project uh, that we're working on right now, and they just bought the house. It was a parade home. So the house was just finished. The mm-hmm. pool was just finished. And he's like, it doesn't meet our family's needs. So when we went out there, he wanted diving and he wanted a slide. A grotto. And a grotto. And so what we talked about on his particular project was actually coming in and adding a pool right next to the existing pool. Not tearing it out, but adding a pool to it and changing it so it was a vanishing edge. So it cascaded down into the new pool. Yeah. It also helped with the elevation change, which we had over five feet of fall in that backyard. And yeah. to try to add something on at the same level was going to create some real challenges. So that was a solution that's going to be real fun that's going to be coming up. But uh, what are some other reasons that you uh, remember people? So style would be a, a big one, too, because there's a lot of pools. like They like their pool, but it's a freeform pool. And obviously contemporary modern style is in. It has been in for a while, so that that's a big one too. Yeah. Or it could be you know flip flop. Someone would not, might not like that style, but so style in general. Yeah. So a lot of people they buy the home. Yeah. They move in, and they're like, I like the location, I like the bones of the structure, but for the most part, we're going to gut it internally, and we're going to gut it outside so we can fix it to be our vibe. Yeah. And so you know where someone comes in. And does that, and that's probably the the number one thing that people look at is that they're like, I just can't work with this shape, given what I want to do uh, from a, a style standpoint. Some people are like, I want symmetry, and this existing pool doesn't line up with anything, and so the, none of the lines are symmetrical at all, and this is going to be driving me insane, and so. <laughs> we blow it up and start over. It happens a lot too when you have a remodel on the house. So that, that comes in the back end. They want to remodel the pool, but instead of just remodeling it, they blow it up instead. So so sometimes it's with the remodeling the house, sometimes the pool's now in the wrong spot. Yeah. So we've had to remove pools because it was going to be under the house uh, addition that was done. <laughs> or the the views all changed and the views now looked at a different direction like we're working on that one in University Park, all the yeah. views are going to go out the side now mm-hmm. instead of to the back. And so, you know, if they had a pool, they don't. Uh, but, you know, then everything would be wrong. So 
we did a project in Flower Mound years ago, and they did a complete renovation. And when I walked up, it was weird because the pool was in the side yard. Oh, wow. Now, this was on acreage, but it was on the side of the house. It was like, who, who looks at this over here? I, I, yeah. And it was like, well, this was built with the first house, and we totally re- – I was like, oh, that makes total sense. So yeah. for them – uh, as well as we just finished one here in Dallas. That's what I was thinking. It was in the side yard as well. And, uh, yeah. and they're adding windows around the whole, you know, the perimeter of the backyard. And uh, so the sight lines are now focused in the whole different area of the yard. Right. And the pool is not part of that. So, yeah. Correct. So um, so it, it's just in the wrong spot. The, the other thing that sometimes happens is, the pool's okay, but we're adding so many other elements into the backyard now. We want a cabana, and we want a swim-up bar, and we want a fire pit, and we want a spa, and we want all these different things. And there's no way to work all those in with the setbacks from the property line between the pool and, like, the property line. So yeah. the pool's in the wrong place, so we've got to blow it up so we can fit this jigsaw puzzle together. Yeah. The pool's maybe a little too big and they want to fit all these new toys or something like that. Or sometimes just the wrong location. Okay. Uh, actually, the one that we're going to talk about a little bit later when we talk about case studies, the pool ended up bigger. But it was all the pieces around it that just didn't work. Another thing could be uh, the pool's just old in general. I know you mentioned this in the beginning, but like they get a core sample of the the gunite and the gunite's just just bad in general. Um, so yeah. So structurally, some pools aren't in good shape. No. So it could be the structure. The other thing, hydraulics that, maybe. Hydraulics is a big thing that's changed over the years, and you know, a lot of times people are like, "Well, we're going to redo all of the stuff," but if the guts of this thing are, are in poor shape, mm-hmm. it's never going to be efficient and cleaning and all those things. So the other thing is, I've had people that are like. Well, I want in four cleaning, and there's no way I can add in four cleaning to an existing structure. So, you know, <laughs> that and many other reasons, I'm just going to blow this thing up and start over. Yeah, good luck digging underneath the pool and coring holes for a floor system. Yeah, well, you'd have to jackhammer the pool and saw cut it, and you would make it Swiss cheese. It would literally fall apart. Yeah. There's there's no way that would work. Uh, but the, the other reason that people blow them up is that it's at the wrong elevation. We've got a yard that's got a slope in it, and a lot of times they put the pool where the yard finally flattened out, which was down a ways. And so when you looked out, you couldn't see the pool. Yeah. Or it was very limited views of the pool. So we've got a couple that are case studies that we did that, and we changed the elevation and lifted the pool up to a higher elevation so there was more visibility inside the house. Because you got to realize... 25 years ago, what did people use pools for? Just to cool off. Swim. Yeah. They were swimming pools. Yeah. Okay. How many people swim in their pool today? Uh, quite a bit, but not as much as back in the day, probably. They, they're definitely an art art piece for some customers. It's an art piece, and other people just want to hang out. Yeah. They just want to sit out there and drink a beer and have a glass of wine. Yeah. And, you know, sit and you know visit with their friends and enjoy the fire and water and there's All so, the visual things. Yeah, there's scientific studies that show that most people want to be around some kind of water. Just the being around it, the presence of it, the sound of it. So, yeah. So the functions have changed. And so before, you know, you didn't mind, you know, walking out 60 feet away from your house and that's where the pool was. And if you didn't see it, it wasn't that big a deal. But now it's something that you want to interact with on a daily situation. So having it closer. So, those are some reasons that people blow pools up. So it's in the wrong place, it's the wrong elevation, it's the wrong style, it's the wrong function, it's the wrong finishes, although you can change finishes, but um, it's not structurally sound. And I bought this house, and I want to create my dream setting here, and this just doesn't fit. So let's blow it up and start over. Yeah. So. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. So there's some challenges if you look at blowing it up and starting over. Okay, so the first thing is you have to demo it. Yeah. So when you demo it, most of the time people use an excavator to do that. Most of the time it has a rock hammer on it, 
And so we're going to chip this structure apart and haul the pieces out. Now, I do know of one guy that uses a wrecking ball. That's cool. Who's that? Uh, it's a guy in McKinney that oh, okay. digs pools. He dug pools for me a long before. time ago. And he, he goes in and they told him that he couldn't use it anymore. Oh. And... <laughs> Uh, University Park and Highland Park because they, they said, you know, what if the cable snapped and the thing went flying or something like that? So they said it was too much of a liability. So they oh. took some of the fun out, but I guess he gets to smash them up in other places. Yeah, that's interesting. But when you take the pool out, there's two different ways that people do it. So one is they're going to come in and they're going to take the decks out and they're going to take the upper shell of the pool, the, the beam off, mm -hmm. throw it into the shell of the pool, punch some holes in the floor and fill it up with dirt. And leave it for the next owner. Plant daisies on top of it yeah. and say, you know, that's great. Now, that conversation used to happen a lot more because people had their pool and they were just sick and tired of dealing with the maintenance and it was hard to deal with. And the kids were gone and they're like, we're pumping money into this thing and I don't see any benefit of it. And so just fill it in and plant. I had one when I was in California, we took it out and made it a sunken rose garden. So, I mean, mm -hmm. people were just like, just get it out of here. So that's more of a, I don't even want to have a pool anymore type deal. Correct. Yeah. I'm just done with it. You know, take it away. With that, if you leave a shell in the ground, when you go to sell the house, you have to disclose that. Yeah. There's a pool under the ground. Yeah. So we did a pool dig several years ago. It wasn't one of my projects. It was somebody else's. And they went to start and literally six inches down, that hit the shell of the pool. Oh, wow. And they had no idea it was there in the first place? No. I, oh, this is even worse. They had built the house over the top of the pool. Oh, that's not good. No, not good at all. Here's the other crazy thing. They had filled the pool in not with dirt, but with bricks. Oh, my gosh. So this was a diving pool, eight, nine feet deep, filled up with bricks. Anyway. Needless to say, that caused a few problems in the construction of the new pool that we were fixing to build and had to be dealt with by a lot of different people, including attorneys. <laughs> so if you do tear a pool out and leave the shell in the ground, you must disclose that it's there. Most of the projects I deal with, we remove the shell in its entirety. So the floor is taken out, the walls are taken out, the decks are taken out, everything's hauled off, and we start with a new site. I'm wondering, um, just just thinking in my head, if you're leaving a pool that's, you know, you, you broke out most, most of it, got the beams out and everything, but you bury it, is there any... Uh, is there any negat like, negative uh, outcome of having that pool still there in the backyard? like running utilities or something like that. Well, if you're trying to take anything through that area, you could run into the shell of the pool. Uh, if you're trying to plant something, you may run into the shell of the pool. Mm, okay. So with a large tree or something like that, you got to dig a big hole. Okay. Yeah. So those are reasons that you, you want to take it out in its entirety. When you do take it out, you're left with a void. Mm -hmm. Now, some people build the new pool in a totally different location, which makes it easy. You come in and fill the hole in. You can pack the dirt. And what you're going to put on top of that has a lot to do with how you're going to compact that dirt. And, and again, this is Texas. Yeah. When I worked in California, you backfilled to 95% compaction, which was basically like original soil. So somebody else could come in and work on top of that. And how long has it been since you worked in California? Uh, I left California 25 years ago. Okay, just to give some perspective. Yeah, so the projects that we do, we're going to take the shell out. We're going to put dirt back in. If they're going to plant grass 
and the grass settles over the years, an inch or two, then that's not a big deal. But if you're going to come in and put something structurally over the top of it, that becomes a big deal. We've got a project right now that the eight foot deep end was going to have a deck and retaining wall run across that. So we got prices to compact that and have an engineer come out and inspect the compactions as they do it in six inch lifts as they fill up the whole thing so we can reach the 95% compaction. That way we can build on top of it. Yeah. A lot of people in this part of the country will come in and use road base, not topsoil, because it's easier to compact and they'll fill that void up with that. The other solution is to come in and add a pier structure to support the structure, especially if it's like going clear across the middle of something. So you don't want a settlement area in the middle of the pool that could settle and crack the pool in two. So you may come in and pier the whole structure so there, there's no problems with settlement if you're building over that space. So the engineers that I work with, what they're looking for is, well, gee, if you had a rec pool and you took it out and you put a diver back in the same spot, no problem because the diver's deeper yeah. than the original pool. So now we're on undisturbed soil, so it, we don't have a problem. The, the challenge comes in usually with the so, tanning ledge. Okay, because it's higher up. It's higher up, so we've got more possibility of fill dirt in there. So a lot of times... We'll use bag walls, build a wall out of bags of concrete, and then use road base behind that to fill it and compact it. And that way it's very stable. The other thing is under the spa, you know, we've got the benches. So that could be an area that there's could be potential settlement. A lot of times that'll be shot solid and gunite. Same thing with benches. So uh, would that be like grottos as well? Or are those usually, because I, I would imagine, I, I haven't noticed it ever, um, but next time I'm on a job site with a grotto, I'm going to look at it. But I don't know if they're shot the same way that some benches are. I'm imagining they are. Well, the grotto, you've got basically a bench. Yeah. Well, I know with our benches and steps, those are usually formed inside the pool, in the shell. Is that how grottos are? It would be formed and shot. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The challenge of undisturbed soil, there's ways to work around that. The other solution is just don't build the pool where the old one was. Yeah. And then you don't have a problem at all. In some cases that works. In some cases we've got a small space and so we need to incorporate it and make it all work. And you might do it in the same spot, but it's just higher up or, or in a relatively different location, even though it's the same point. Right. <clears throat> That's why you would have dirt underneath it that had been disturbed yeah we're going to take a break here for a second and get into outdoor living so with outdoor living we like to go to barbecue bits here we're going to share some information of everything that you may want to consider in your outdoor living space as far as features especially for the kitchen hope you enjoy this so the big green egg, I have a big green egg. Mm -hmm. I love my big green egg. And but they people put them in different situations and setups. Sure. Okay. So what I want to talk about is the pro of cart versus nest versus built-in. And sure. you know, the different applications that might people look at. Sure. So the cart model, as you can see, you've got two side shelves. It's made to prep cook plate. Also, um, ease of use, space constraint, these drop down. If I'm buying a big green egg and I'm building a huge kitchen and pool with you and I want to cook today, it's value added. I can buy this cart model, take it home, and watch you as you build my pool. Right. So the, the, <laughs> the nine months that I'm waiting on permits That's and right. construction, you can That's be right. eating good you and, know, with the cart. Right. It's a nominal investment is what it is. So, um, but, but then we get to the build-in point. You can, you can separate the hardware, take the egg off the nest, and build it in to uh, an outdoor kitchen. Now, the pro of this also is a lot of times people with the outdoor kitchen 
want to keep the kitchen area clean because mm -hmm. people are sitting at a bar stool, so this right. might be in a separate spot. That's right. You know, so That's right. that would be the advantage. Uh, but you know, what's the advantage of this versus a cart type setup? Okay, so when you decide what direction you want to go, so after you buy the egg and you decide, you know, it happens, hey, I'm not going to really build this in. What's the value added vehicle? You buy a cart model. The cart models that we show is by Challenger Designs right out of Indiana. This is an all aluminum uh, cart here and you can store all the accoutrements that go with egg. So just buying the egg, just buying the egg itself, uh, there's a lot of hard lines like rib racks, ash tools, charcoal. This becomes a mobility piece that you can serve to the table and chair. You can store your items inside of it and it's all dry fitted. Oh, so that's nice and clean inside. It is, it okay, is. Okay, so yeah. I got a place that I can put my uh, plate setter right. and you know my rib racks and all that stuff. Uh, that's right. Charcoal goes in there, so that's a nice setup. Right. So uh, the plate itself. setter is for the old school egg guys <laughs> that have had their egg a long time. You, your new egg guys, uh, your egg heads, we call they're called convectors. But if you've had your egg for a long time, like this guy and I have, it's called a plate setter. Is what we call it. It's what, what the what original they, name was. What, what do they call them now? It's a convector. Is what it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, that's for the Gen Zs. We're the OGs, <laughs> so we call them. Uh, plate setters. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the information. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the barbecue bits that we just featured today, and we'll have more coming up next week. If there's something in particular that you're interested for, let us know, and we'll get back into the episode now. One thing that I run into with some frequency when we do this is the equipment pad was located in a spot that worked just great. But now we're going to put a new equipment pad in. And the equipment pads have grown over the years. Yes, they have. You know, when I first started, a standard equipment pad was a 4 by 8 With that, a little time clock on it. <laughs> with a little time clock on it. And that was with a gas heater. And those gas heaters were bigger back in those days. But it was just typically a pump and a filter and a heater. That, that was what you had. And now you have sanitation systems and you have water feature pumps and plumbing and valves. And now you have chillers and you have so many more pieces of equipment that go in there that it's not going to fit in the closet that the original one was in. No. Or in between the master bedroom windows that the original one was in. We, we had a project that just recently we took out the equipment and it was in a closet and the new equipment set is bigger than the structure that the closet was in <laughs> because the project became much more complex but that's something that you have to think about the other thing is the electrical lines that went to that a lot of times they may not be able to handle the voltage that you need on the, the new situation as well as the gas line that may supply that heater yeah. won't supply the four fire bowls, line burner, fire pit, and heater that you're now going to require. Yeah. So those may need to be upgraded as well as you may want to look at the location of how all this fits together. The One of the other challenges is access. So when you... That's a big one. ...are blowing something up, you want a big piece of equipment. The bigger, the better. Easier, yeah, and faster. The, the faster that it's going to take. I had a project a number of years ago that we were doing a pool in, and we had access through a doorway. Oh, my goodness. Wait, uh, to demo? To demo. Oh, geez. So we had to access the, through the doorway to demo and go down five stairs with, you know, so they'd take wheelbarrows down, jackhammer it out, jackhammer it out, haul it all out by hand, and then it was a hand dig, yeah, for the pool as well. That's crazy. Honestly, the demo is probably harder than the dig. The demo took longer yeah. than the dig did. That's wow. Yes. So the the demo took quite a while. There's a lot of lots with you know a lot of you know retaining walls around the whole house, and that scenario could pop up. It, it was a. These were condos, and so there was one unit next to the next, next to the next, next to the next. Oh, a zero only, lot line? Yeah, and so yeah. the only access into it was through the garage door. Uh, the garage was in the back part. 
and there was a little courtyard in between the garage and the house. So that's what we had to deal with. But you want to really consider what size equipment that you can get in and make sure that everybody's on the same page with that. We're going to take a break for design concepts now. So design concepts, what we're going to do is talk about why we did the things on a particular job. So with Lazy Rivers, I've seen a lot uh, throughout my time. Um, and they're usually, all I've seen is, you know, the free forming, a river that, you know, simulates a river. Have you done anything more modern, more contemporary? So let me explain the design concept on that particular project. Okay. So I was brought in to help create a space for this particular client. Hadn't met the client. That's a, a disaster in itself because unless you communicate with the client, you can't figure things out. Well, you have a middleman that doesn't really know exactly why they're saying that. Like, oh, they want this, they want that, but why do they want that? So he he said they want a free form pool, but they don't want boulders. Yeah, and you've done some real cool contemporary free form stuff. So come up with something. Here's some of the things that they want. And I was like, well, okay. So I worked up a design. They put it in three dimensional model to them. They presented it to them. They're like, we don't like it. Hmm. I was like, okay. Again, I wasn't in the meeting when they discussed the project. Yeah. They asked me to do a, another revision, and I said, I, I need to talk to somebody. Yeah. And they said, well, the client's on vacation in Hawaii. You can't talk to them. And I said, well, can I talk to the interior designer? Oh. Sure. You can talk to the interior designer. So I called the interior designer up, and I said, I understand they want curves, and they want something kind of modern. I said, the first question I asked them, because this is one of the things that's real important, is I said, is symmetry important? And they said, oh, the most. And I said, okay, there's the problem. Yeah. Nobody asked that question. So when we want a symmetrical with curves and straight lines, she said, yeah. And I said, okay, that, that makes a lot more sense. We had a very strong element in the house. It was the dining area and it, arched out and so it made sense to put it there and they were building a cabana lined up across with that so okay. i said okay i need to create the space in between this cabana and the house there needs to be a curve it needs to be symmetrical it needs to be modern looking so i came up with a design and the clients put it in 3d they sat down i was in this meeting so i could get the interaction with them and the client and the interior designer said, okay, we wanted something that was balanced with a center line, with a curve, and we wanted some tanning ledges, and we wanted recreational space for the kids, and we wanted some cool features. So I had worked in the spa over by the cabana and flanked it with water bowls and fire bowls. So it was a combination with these four, two of them were water and fire by the spa, the key focal points. And then on the outer edges of the pool was just water uh, bowls in themselves. And they're like, this looks great. Everything's amazing. Let me run it by my husband and see what he thinks. So they ran it by him. He said, we're spending a lot of money. Really like to have a nice place for my kids. Could we add a lazy river? Oh, well. And I said, well, that's going to be a challenge because we already have a cabana that's under construction. Oh, my goodness. With arbors coming off the sides. Oh, wow. So how are you going to fit a river in that area? What we did is we tore the piers out for the arbor that were already drilled. Wow. Left the cabana in the middle, and it basically came up with, use that as the center line from the, the kitchen dining area through the spa, through the cabana. And that was a center line for the river, which went around the back. So it was perfectly symmetrical. It was very modern in appearance. In fact, I think it was probably one of the first lazy rivers that I ever saw that was symmetrical. Now, there's a lot of people that have done 
stuff on a more modern vibe with Lazy Rivers. But this still, I think, is one of the only symmetrical ones that I've ever seen. So if you ask the right questions yeah. and you understand all the components that people want, then you can create the right situation for them. But if you don't ask the right questions, sometimes you end up in the wrong space. And I always ask people if symmetry is important. Because I've had people like, oh, I want something ultra modern and their house is totally asymmetrical. Yeah. And they come back and say, oh, no, this has to line up on this particular center line and everything's got to be balanced off of that, which to me is not necessarily a modern design, but everybody's different in what they're trying to do. So ask the right questions. You get the uh, right answers. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Well, that was that design concept. And if you've got a concept or question that you have, please let us know and we'll try to answer that for you as well. Cool. The other challenge that you have when you do a blow up and start over is it's going to cost more than a new pool. Yeah. But the benefit of that is starting from scratch versus using bones that you already have. Well, there, there may not be much that you can use. Yeah from the existing situation. In fact, some people ask me all the time, well, can we reuse this? Or, you know, is there something that we can do here that we don't have to fully demo? And there's only one thing that I've ever run across that there might be some value with. Yeah. What is that? That's a wood deck. Okay. Yeah. I, in my career, have never paid to demo a wood deck. (laughs) So uh, how do you, you know, get away with that? What I tell the clients is, listen, wood has value. Okay. And so if you put it out there, whether it's on Craig's book or Facebook or whatever, you know, type situation that's available, you can advertise and there'll be somebody that'll pay you money to remove that deck. Just make sure they get everything. Yeah. That's the deal. They have to take everything and there's been a couple of customers that have been hosed with that a little bit because they left the posts. and But for us to take the posts out was a whole lot cheaper for us just to take the wood deck out. But I was mentioning this to a designer. He's like, wow, I never thought of that. And so he went home and he was telling his dad, hey, I got this project that's coming up and we're going to take this wood deck out. And the dad was like, I want the wood deck. <laughs> And so the designer then had to help his dad take the wood deck out personally. Yeah. So he thought he was coming up with a solution that was going to make it easy for him. And it oh. actually made it quite hard for him. Yeah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> so would that would that maybe happen with turf as well? Because obviously turf has popped off like crazy in the last couple of years. I, I think there will be. We did the project over in Fort Worth a couple mm-hmm. of years ago. And they had turfed the whole backyard and so when we came in to demo, there was a discussion about how we were going to be able to match new turf with old turf, and that wasn't going to work. And no. so they were like, okay, let's just put all turf in. So I thought I had scored. Oh. And so I had the landscapers go over and roll the turf up for me, and they had put it in the garage, and we were going to pick it up the next day. And the client called me and said, uh, I was talking to my parents. Oh, no. And my parents decided that they would like the turf. And I was like, well, that would have been great if you decided that months ago and you could have dealt with it. I just paid someone to roll it up. And so I was like, okay, well, you can have it. So I I gave them the turf. So, But I think that's going to become something that, yes, there will be a definite issue where there's value there. Yeah. So there's going to be somebody that wants to roll it up and deal with the labor and haul it off and use it on their project like I was interested in doing Yeah. versus just throwing it in the dumpster. Yeah, the only other thing I could think of would be like flagstone or something, but that breaks when you take it out. So that, that wouldn't work. Right. I've had clients like we did the one in Dallas, the real little one this year mm-hmm. that were under construction right now. They had a flagstone patio. So they stacked some of it to the side yeah. that they might use for stepping stones or something like that to go around to the front. That That's usually about the only thing that you can look at. Yeah. 
But for the most part, what you're taking away is not going to have any value. It's going to be pretty much tore up. Yeah, so you're start. You're already spending a little bit extra just to start the new job. Right. Now, some people ask, well, what about the pool equipment? And there's been a couple of cases recently that that might have been somewhat valid, but we changed the size of the pool. So the pumps and filters, we were going to want bigger ones than what they already had. And what that client actually did is they donated the equipment to someone that their house had burned down and to help them offset some of the costs that they were having to rebuild everything for them. So it wasn't just trashed, but there was a lot of value in equipment also after the the freeze, the great Texas pool massacre. Yeah. Uh, there, I know a lot of people were stockpiling stuff and using parts and stuff like that. I mean, people were stealing like our equipment. We were putting GPS trackers. That, that was such a crazy time. We were chaining up equipment, like new equipment sets to the, the pad and stuff. It was wild. So yeah, that was, that, that was different. There's, there's a whole, that's a whole nother topic of like <laughs> yeah. stories. Have fun. Uh, so what are the benefits you get out of blowing it up and starting over? Um, well, I said you get to start from scratch and do your own thing. Um, I think that would be the biggest thing. But also, I know there's a several jobs where visibility of the pool, like you mentioned, was, was just really bad. And, for instance, there's a job where uh, you did stairs the whole length, which opened it up because you could see what was behind it versus, you know, having the old – what was it like a turn staircase with the rail on it and you couldn't see anything because the masonry was in the way and right so sight lines were opened up for sure so you can customize it to your view because a lot of times there is a particular line of sight especially when people are dealing with symmetry they they want everything centered on you know a particular doors or windows or maybe the front door and so you can nail that and get that perfect and it then it can also fit your style that uh, was uh, probably the, the biggest one. And then, you know, activities, it can, you know, accommodate what you're trying to do from an overall activity standpoint. Because, I mean, I've never done two pools the same ever. And it's amazing how diverse that people want things. It's, it's getting more and more diverse uh, from the, the requests of, you know, I want two tanning ledges now. Yeah. And I want, you know, bar stools built in. And I want, you know, all these places to hang out and versus, like I said, when I first started designing pools, it was about swimming. So that's not as important of an activity, but it's one of them still. So I'm curious, what was the first pool that you blew up um, and started over again? When did that trend for you start? Can you remember? I don't remember ever doing that in California. And I worked out there for seven years. I did a lot of remodels, but I kept the structure intact. But most of that's been here lately and it's becoming more and more frequent that I, that I do that. But gosh, that's a good question. And I I I should have asked you before we even started talking. It just popped into my head. I was like, I wonder which one was the first. Well, so I have several case studies. The first one I want to talk about well, let me preface this. These are five different projects. If you go to my YouTube channel, there's videos on all these projects with the before and the after. There's time-lapse videos showing the construction. Some of them have also what's called a pool tour where we go through and explain why everything's done. Also, most of them have a flyby, which just goes through and shows pretty pictures of it. So there's a lot of information on the YouTube channel, Farley Designs that you may want to check out. So the first one, if you look it up, it's called the Obeyed Time Lapse. And the Obeyeds, the big issue with them was, and this was this was the first time this happened to me. Yeah. I got to blow up my own project. Oh, that's cool. Well, so you 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 designed a, a project for a homeowner and then they moved or something and there's a new homeowner and they didn't like the old job. That's exactly right. Okay. So the, the first homeowner had college age children. Okay. They wanted a swim up bar. They yeah. wanted a diving pool. They, they wanted, wanted a diving pool or they didn't? They did. Okay. Okay. They wanted a sunken cabana. They wanted a, 
a perimeter overflow spa. They wanted the spa real close to the house. The pool was real close to the house. And so it was, that, that was what they wanted. The Obeds bought the house. They have seven kids. And they wanted a kid zone and a pool zone in the backyard. Yeah. And so they wanted outside the main patio areas, they wanted to see lawn area. And they ended up on a focal point. And what we did was a very large splash pad yeah, along with a fire pit. So this is an area they could hear water, see water, see fire. In fact, the front door, as you drove up the front driveway, which looked through the front door, it looked directly onto the, the splash pad. So that was the line of sight that they wanted. They wanted the pool off to the side because they wanted to come in and fence that separately so the kids could have this whole huge area to play and be active. They had a tennis court in the back so they could get to the tennis court. So then the pool was over to the side, and they wanted a slide. Okay. They didn't want a diving board. Yeah. So we came in with a big slide, and this is a really cool slide. Uh, it's known as the Big Green Wall with this slide, so it's pretty well known. It's in, really cool. In that aspect. They also wanted not one cabana, but two cabanas. Yeah. They wanted a ki- a cooking cabana, and then they wanted a living room cabana, and in the middle was set up that they had a louvered arbor so it could even so the massive square footage for the outdoor living was huge and we also had a hillside there that they wanted to work up onto and so the whole thing that they it was in the wrong place the elevation was correct but it was the totally wrong style and the functions were totally different and so they bought the house and they just wanted to change it so we had finished the pool 18 months before. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was that quick. Yes. It was not that. In fact, the people, the Obeds wanted the house. They walked through the house when it was under construction and kept offering the clients more money to sell their dream home, yeah. which they eventually did, and the Obeds moved in. So that that's a really cool one to check out. So the next one is, if you look on YouTube, it's the Modern Hillside and Outdoor Living. And this is the one you were just talking about with the stairs. Okay. So we came in with a really wide set of stairs so you could look down and see the uh, pool from inside the house still. And with doing that, we came in and were able to also lower the outdoor living so it wasn't as blocking a lot of views of the property. And it's down a lot lower on the property, but we brought the pool up in elevation so we could see that. But then we had to step back down to get to the fire pit area and work with the existing trees. So there was a lot of elevation changes to make everything work. Uh, They, of course, came back within for cleaning. The old one didn't have it. You couldn't see the old pool at all. No, it was, it was, it was crazy from inside the house. And so it's probably the, one of the most drastic before and after pictures that I've got. I think the, was that a, like a little fountain that they had, the the rock, well, not little, but the rock waterfall that they had right in front of the window? <laughs> like, I, it was one thing if that thing wasn't there, um, the visibility of the pool was still not there, but they actually blocked their window. So the office window, looking out, was behind a boulder waterfall that was built on the porch. You didn't even see the water from the boulder waterfall no, from the office. It, you it, just it, see rocks. You just saw a pile of rocks. So the lady said she threw a party the day that we just simply demoed <laughs> the backyard because she could now see the backyard from her office. Oh, that's awesome. So the uh, so theirs was in the wrong place. Yeah. We brought it closer to the house. It was at the wrong elevation. We changed that. It was totally different style. Um, and then... The functions were totally different. It was a diving pool, the original one, and we made it a rec pool. And the finishes were all totally different. The color yeah, scheme was the color different. color palette, it was way different. The interaction with the outdoor living was totally different. So it, it ended up as a, a really nice project. So the third one, if you look on YouTube, is called Lightness versus Darkness. And this project had the existing pool in the side yard and they had totally renovated the house. And when they renovated the house, they built some stuff with uh, the house that 
didn't quite feel and finish out with where the interior designer wanted to be. And so between me and the interior designer, we totally changed the lines of sight, uh, the focal points, the structures that were done. They again had a double cabana, one for living in TV area and the other one was a cooking with a built-in table. They had lots of fire features that they incorporated and this is something that's a very strong visual from multiple places in the house, all really cool things to look at. So uh, we fixed it from the wrong place. The elevation was okay, totally changed the style and the functions that, that were there. I think that pool structurally wasn't sound. I can't remember. We, we just tore it out. From the before, it's completely drained. That's right. in your video. I, I remember this job because uh, this is actually the year you walked it. I don't know if it was a pre-con or, or what it was, but I walked it with you when I was doing my internship. So it was like my first like taste of the pool industry when I was in right out of high school. Right. Um. So, yeah, they had llamas and everything. Yes. It's a really cool piece of property. And, yeah, the, the after is is stunning with the, the double uh, covered structure. But the... There's some really cool features that we did creatively, uh, and also the interior designer was involved a lot with the project. So we, we used some materials that we'd never used before for the first time. Like that was the first job that I ever used Decton on. Okay. So, I think uh, lighting's a big uh, difference too when it comes to blowing it up and redoing it because the lighting back in the day for pools was subpar. There wasn't really lighting. Well, you had around uh, the pool. I'm not, I'm not just even talking about the the water lights. I'm talking about around the whole pool. Right. Yeah. The uh, the next one is the Snowy River. So oh, the Snowy River is a lazy river. Yeah. And a monster pool. This was again a large family. They were into all kinds of activities. So they wanted the deep end. They wanted the slide. They wanted a huge shallow area to play basketball and uh, volleyball. They wanted a huge tanning ledge. And then they wanted a lazy river. And so the existing pool, I think, was close to eight feet wide and 40 to 50 feet long. It was that's a long pool. It was just an exercise pool. Okay. And these kids were trying to swim around in it and run around and play in it, and it was just like a disaster. So the functions were totally different. This one went from very straight line, lap pool, to totally organic uh, with the Lazy River. And the elevations were fine on that particular project, but we totally changed the whole thing, and the pool ended up probably six times bigger than the original pool. The uh, last one uh, was the Hoffman residence, uh, Hoffman time-lapse, where we had an existing rec pool. They wanted a diver. And this particular project was the jigsaw puzzle. We had a oh, huge okay. tree. We had a huge cabana. We had a fire pit. We had a spa. We had the, the lot was shaped like a pie. And the, the way that you want your lot to be shaped like a pie, you want it to be small in the front, and big in the back. But this one wasn't. This one was the other way around. As the lot got, went back, it got narrower and narrower. And right so, on the golf course. That's kind of common. It was right on the golf course. And so there was a lot of things they wanted with privacy with the neighbor. We had to get a variance to get the cabana in from a height standpoint, which was sunken. There was a lot of different pieces that had to be done and, and everything, I mean, literally came down to inches and in making all the things that, that we wanted to do in that particular project work. What was funny is when we went to demo the pool, which was a rec pool, we started demoing it out. It was not a rec pool. It was a diver that uh -oh. someone had remodeled and filled in the deep end of the pool solid with concrete. And so that took a little bit longer to check. And out. they wanted a diver. They wanted a diver. <laughs> now, you look at the before picture. Yeah. That, that is the ugliest waterfall that I probably have ever seen <laughs> on a swimming pool. It was even uglier than the one that was on the back porch that the lady was looking at. So th this was, it didn't fit. It was in the wrong place. Uh, elevation was okay. Although we did 
step it down, I think about a foot to try to deal with the grade change in the yard because we we're going so much farther out into the yard. The style changed. Uh, the functions definitely changed. So th- these are all things to look at when you're looking at whether you blow it up and start over. So hopefully those are some things you can look for and see if this is something that would work for you. Yeah. There's questions that people are going to have in regards to this. What you really need to do is find somebody that's a good designer to work with you and try to help figure out if this is a process that you want to go through. But as you were mentioning 25 years ago, I didn't do any of these. We remodeled them. We didn't blow them up and start over, but the functions of what people want to use space for has changed so drastically that there's a lot of 25 year old pools that don't meet any of the requirements that people have. So it's just better to start over and put a good investment in the backyard is if it fits the house and the style that you want, whoever comes in the next time, it's going to complement it and, you know, you're going to have a great product. One of the things, just mentioning all five of those projects, all five of those projects won design awards. So they ended up with something that looked really nice and fit the setting that they were in as well as the architecture that they were in. You just have to decide what you want to do on your project and get with someone and figure that out. Yeah, just figure out the goals. If you're looking at your backyard, don't like your pool, just figure out what you would change if you could do anything. And sometimes it's blow it all up because you can't do that with a remodel. So, Well, if you dream big, you're going to get real cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, uh that's all I've got to cover today. You have any other thoughts? Uh, no, I'm I'm good too.